Okay, Luke, first off, uh, great result. Um, two goals, that must feel good. Yeah, it's a good campaign to kick off the, the World Cups. Um, I'd only previously done the World Championships with the team, so to be able to experience a few omniums at a World Cup level before Worlds this year, hopefully uh, it pays off. Is this the best ever track for him, you think? Uh, yeah, I believe so. I think from a junior year, yeah, I had built up that, that track background, but um, having a year off and then coming back on the road, there were a few areas that really needed improvement, but uh, on the road, on the road there. Um, you were third in track worlds as well, so this will really motivate you for the, the upcoming worlds? Definitely. Um, it was disappointing not to make the, the, the top four riders for the team pursuit in Minsk, but uh, this year is a different year and um, I think I'm going from strength to strength in the individual events in the Omnia and I think that's um, also contributing to my team pursuiting abilities, so I can only hope. You've also won on the road, uh, Harold Suntour is, is one example, a stage win there, so how do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as a track rider who does some road, a road rider who does some track, or a combination of both? Um, I think leading into the Commonwealth Games and obviously um, place a bit of emphasis on the Olympics, there's probably going to be a bit more uh, concentration on the track, but uh, I love the road and the road also gives me the ability to, to break up, like track is very intense and very uh, short blocks. So to have that road in between and then to have some objectives on the road which are very different as well. I think that kind of helps just uh, break your year up and keep you mentally focused on, on different goals. How would you define yourself as a rider? Uh, I'm probably a sprinter but uh, yeah I, I don't mind getting in those breaks in the road races and trying my hand. Um, I think obviously maybe after the Olympics if I was to pursue a full on road career uh, you'd have to be a little bit more um, versatile and able to help out in team roles and be a climber and whatever it may be, but yeah. What's your background to the sport? Um, so I started racing when I was 11 and um, started doing track racing at the age of 12, so I've been, been on, on the boards for a while. Uh, had a road and track career growing up and then when I was about so under 18s, uh, under 19, sorry, I did Junior Worlds, went to Cape Town and um, I won three gold medals there and then the year after I uh, started with the AIS and I kind of went to Italy and it was a very big jump, there's a, like the racing level there and under 23s, you know, you've got four years to advance there and I really struggled so I had a bit of time off and went to uni and what have you but now, yeah, firmly back in the saddle and as I said, the track's only just starting to get ticking along again, but it's going well. What's the reaction been to your wins, um, most recent wins? Uh, by who? Well, people in general, have you got much feedback from uh, fans, from fellow competitors, etc.? Yeah, yeah, of course. Uh, it's, it's always great to be able to come back from you know, being relatively unknown to, to be competitive again, but I don't take it for granted. And it's, it's, been, you know, it's been a tough path back. There's a very competitive group in the Australian team at the moment, so vying for those five spots in the team pursuit as well as the Omnium, it's always going to be tough and ongoing but um, no, Timmy Decker, my coach has always backed me and has always had full faith in my ability um, I guess it's more so me having that faith in myself and yeah, developing that You're with the Synergy Baku team now for 2014, how did that come about? Uh, I originally spoke to Jeremy Hunt in the um, Azerbaijan tour this year and um, after a few conversations, uh, he seemed very interested in wanting to try and develop me and take me on board, and uh, that was something that I was very interested in. Obviously, uh, the track is a as a stepping stone uh, to to pursuing bigger bigger goals like the Commonwealth Games, the Olympics, and um, having a team that's willing to work in with that and also um, you know help polish my road skills. I think it was a pretty good opportunity. You've obviously got to balance the road and track, so how is your schedule looking for the next few months? Uh, it's going to be very full on, but uh, I think you just have to have a pretty close relationship with both parties. And At the end of the day, I think uh, as long as I rest up and do all the right things, I should, should be in for a pretty good season, but I'm um, pretty motivated and very happy with the team so far, so things are looking good. Can you tell, tell us about what you'll be doing in, the, in say, the next two, three months, how things play out in terms of not only training and racing, but also where you'll be located? Yeah, the road, road calendar is still yet to be finalised. Races have still got to be organised, but um, it'll be pretty much track for the first 
quarter of the year and then I'll go over and I'll probably live in Girona, Spain and then race with the team for about a two month block and then prepare again for the Commonwealth Games so then track again in the middle of the year and then I'll finish out the back end of the season with the, with the road squad again so that's the general overview. Can you talk about the goals and have you laid out kind of objectives, what you'd like to achieve in both disciplines? Um, I'd obviously like to achieve a few results on the road. A UCI wins, categorised races would be a, a great achievement I think, as well as balancing the track. Um, obviously want to go to the Commonwealth Games and try and win a gold medal there. Um, and then an individual race as well, so there are some various bunch races which I'll try and target. I don't know which one exactly, but uh, there'll be a few people putting their hands up for those positions. How do you see the, I mean obviously Olympics is going to be one thing for a track rider, it's always a, a big deal, um, so how do you see things beyond the Commonwealth Games playing out in terms of the balance between road and track? Uh, yeah, it'll be, it'll be interesting, won't it? There's uh, only a handful of teams that are willing to work in with your track ambitions and once again that's why I'm very lucky to, to be part of Baku next year and they've, they've been very um, willing to cooperate with that. Uh, yeah, as, as far as it goes, I'll just take it one step at a time, see how it all pans out. But I'm um, pretty focused on, on the Commonwealth Games and the Olympics, and I think it will not only help my, my road progression, that, that track background, but yeah, I just have to uh, wait and see. Looking longer term, do you see yourself as, as a guy who wants to do the Grand Tours and be part of the World Tour? Yeah, definitely. I think it's most amateurs or semi-pros dream to to reach that top level and race in the Grand Tours but uh, once again I'm, I'm not naive and thinking that you know it's just all going to happen straight away it's a, it's a pretty um, it's a pretty tough path to, to get up there to the top tier and then to maintain that level and to be competitive is, a, is another story again so I think the track will as I said the track will, will help to gain a few results and then be able to cross over and then um, hopefully doing some of these lower categorised UCI races and maybe these tours that are only a week long instead of, say, three weeks would be better to condition me for that in the future. And, you know, in, in whatever amount of time it takes to get to, to the Grand Tours, Tour de France, do you see yourself then as being a traditional sprinter or, or somebody different to that? Uh, yeah, I definitely think it's probably a sprinter or maybe uh, the odd breakaway here or there, generally on the flat stages. Um, you know, you look at the climbers and I'm... Even at a light weight, I'm still around mid 75s. So um, I would never be too competitive on the hilly terrain. But um, ideally, just to even make that level is is a goal in itself. And then uh, to start achieving results there would be a bonus. Was there any Australian riders when you were growing up that you looked at and thought that you would hope to follow the same career traje trajectory? Yeah, yeah, I've been asked a few times that. Um, when I was quite young, I watched Baden Cook and Robin McEwen fight it out for the green jersey. And they were pretty fond memories, and I always, always looked up to those types of riders. And um, I was lucky enough to be in the AIS of the year of Rowan Dennis and Michael Matthews and some other very successful young riders, and that obviously motivates me and spurs me on. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not shy to the fact that it's hard work that gets you up there, and um, having that year off and having a bit of time away from the bike, obviously, it's going to have a bit of a consequence, and I've just got to continue trying to step up year after year. Do you see, um, just to finish up, do you see Green Edge, Orica Green Edge as potentially a, a team that you could be with in the future? Do you have connections with them? Um, is it too soon to say? Yeah, Orica Green Edge has always uh, worked in with the track program, the Australian track program in particular. And they've had guys like Michael Hepburn and Luke Durbridge and Cameron Meyer all be a part of that. Um, I wouldn't, wouldn't rule it out, but yeah, there's obviously there's a lot of professional teams and whether they're willing to work with the track, I don't know, but... Uh, I think an Australian professional team, being able to work in with them and also compete on the track at an Olympic level, I think that would probably be a yeah, pretty high priority.